championships aren't won on the final shot alone. It all starts with the commitment to stay healthy and on the field for your team. Q Collar, essential brain protection so athletes can chase greatness. Um, all right, short sticks, um, short stick D mids. Obviously, there's just so important to your team defense. Every face off, you're hoping to put somebody who typically identifies as a short stick team out there to go pick up a ground ball. Um, at the end of the day, you need to have a bunch of them and you need to be talented in that position. Um, I have a few guys that I really liked throughout the summer, some that I saw through the spring that, you know, were the burst on kind of the jumping point. But as we've done, I'll defer to you guys to kick things off. I think the best spot is to start with Kev, who seems real eager to talk about a, uh, a fellow from his alma mater. Uh, a guy who really broke onto the scene as a, a sophomore defensive midfielder and top 10 Louisiana, first ever top 10 finish for them. Tal Anton is just a workhorse. He'll work you in the middle of the field and he's relentless with his pressure and he made some really key plays throughout the season. So he, he's going to get key ground balls and uh, game winning assists. So he's everywhere and definitely one to keep an eye out for. And I think something just to add to that, and coaches all the time are looking for short sticks that have size to them, right? You can find a lot of kind of the undersized guy that's a workhorse, has a motor, but I think the guys that really pop to that next level and really appeal to kind of the higher level coaches um, are guys that have great footwork and size. And I think he brings everything you just said to the table on top of being a big body that can get out, have a presence, and have footwork on top of the size. And that's probably a good transition. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking for size, then Connor Sayer is enormous and definitely brings a lot of bulk to the position. Uh, Loyal Academy, uh, True Illinois, True National, uh, saw him last fall and saw him again a few times this summer. And it was one of those situations where I tend to and I prefer to evaluate without a roster. And the reason is because, you know, I want to be uh, – uninfluenced by the name and instead just react to the performance. So what ends up happening is I end up revisiting this, a lot of the same kids because I don't realize it's somebody that I've already evaluated or somebody that I already have like kind of formed an opinion on. And that's what happened with Sarah. And it, it was just consistent in terms of the physicality, the confrontation, um, and, and what he was willing to do. But, you know, with all that praise, I do feel compelled to say that my first impression of Patrick Maloney from Peruvian Valley but he was playing with Team 10 at grade 8, was as strong as I've had. The ga I'll put it this way. The gap between him and who I think is the second best short city midi in this class is wider than the best player and the second best player at any other position, in terms of my opinion. And again, it was largely based on that first impression, but I haven't seen anything in the handful of times that I've seen him since that makes me move off that position. I mean, team 10, that, that team is just every... Every person who's on that team is going to be, you know, playing college across somewhere at a high level and the short stick D mini position particularly. But um, I saw Team 10 at the Alliance Lacrosse League Championship. I also saw 3D New England Red there. And that was where I saw Will Bennett, who, you know, when I fir the first note I had on him was for this kind of over-the-top, slung the ball in the net. You know, I, I looked at him and was like, oh, this is a great, like, kind of offensive talent. But then as I watched more games, what really stood out from a defensive point of view was his kind of first point of contact against the guy dodging was just always on point. It wasn't like he was, um, you know, using all his muscle to kind of press in there. And it, it was just like, he picked a spot, he went for it, knocked the ball loose, knocked the guy back, um, like regained the leverage just in an instant. Uh, I really liked the way that he was able to kind of just like stand these guys up who, you know, some of them were bigger than him. Um, you know, he's about 5'11", close to six foot. He's got some size, but he's not huge. But he just like had this like very controlled chaos to his game that I really appreciated. Do you have thoughts on Jackson Snellberger or Hayden Wade? Hayden Wade's a bit more controlled. Obviously, he's strong, athletic, and again, it, it, everybody to me that I would put in this category is somebody that's going to have a, a presence on ball that you know is going to go and get out and crowd dodgers and be able to run with guys and deter slides right like i think that's the most important piece of the puzzle for it. yeah there aren't that many sure six who i'm like oh man they're awesome off ball 
It's not really the role that you're asking to fill. Well, the other role would be pushing transition, right? And I think sometimes people will overemphasize that. Like, oh, like, I don't know if you can cover the ball, but we're going to slide to him anyway. So let's just see if we can get him going in transition. And like, I understand that. But eventually you're just going to end up putting an offensive midfielder in that spot anyways. So for me in that short stick spot, like, I think Snellbaker is one that pops off for his motor. His hustle is hard. Um, and again, having a presence on ball. Snellbaker is, you know, he's got the, the, el the elbow pads pulled up and like, you know, the Roman Prublisi wants to go out and cross check you into oblivion. And I think Hayden Wade does it with a bit of Bovard, like composure, footwork, staying in the hip and kind of matching feet. Um, but both kind of bring different elements to the table that ultimately deter slides. I think that's a good place to end um, is kind of doubling down on the point that you made. Obviously, we're talking about guys who play short stick team mini right now and are going to be recruited that way. That represents a certain percentage of the overall short stick team minis that you're going to see playing college lacrosse in three to seven years that were recruited in this group. And, and we'll talk about some of those guys that are surely going to end up there when we talk about midfielders in general, offensive midfielders. But the other thing is that, you know, with with the the one conversation I had about the elimination of scholarship limits is now the big boys, so to speak, are going to be able to spend more on uh, short stick teammates than they have in the past. I'm dubious of that largely because I'm dubious of the notion that the reduction in scholarship limits is actually going to yield more money being spent because that money has to come from somewhere and it's going to go to football. But with that being said, it's an interesting thing to consider and you know, who knows? We'll see how it shakes out. In this game, impacts aren't just expected, they're celebrated. That's why premier players choose Q Collar, the proven shield for their brains. Be ready for the clash, keep your head protected, and in the game.